Hello everybody, this is James. I'm going to be giving you a little overview of how to install and set up your G13 gamepad. It looks a little something like this. Um, so let's get right on to it. I am currently using a Windows 8.1 operating system. Um, and uh, so I'll be showing you how to do that on this specific uh, system. So you want to open up your web browser, whatever that may be, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, um, and then you want to go to Logitech.com. And from there, you want to hit the support tab, just hover over it, it'll bring a drop down menu here. Uh, hit support and downloads. Now here's really easy, you just type in what you have, so G13 gamepad. Uh, you can type in just G13, and then you get G13 Advanced Game Board. Just click the More button here. And then you get a new page where it has some info. You can look at your gamepad. You've got some stuff here. Um, basically, you just want to scroll down, and it'll show you a Downloads box right here. So since we're going to be doing 8.1, or just Windows 8, as they have here, uh, hit Windows 8. Um, if, you have a, if you don't know, if you have a 32 or 64-bit operating system, you can hit the Start menu here. Uh, right click on your computer, hit properties, and here it'll show you whether you have a uh, system type 64 bit. So I'm running a 64 bit operating system, so we can close that, choose 64 bit, and then you just click download. Now, once that's done downloading, we'll open it up and we'll do a little walkthrough of what we need to do. So you can go ahead and click your download, uh, and then we run the run the exe here. Now we can close the uh, web browser if you so desire. All right, so here is your Logitech installation process. So here uh, you want to select your language, uh, English for me, obviously, and you want to hit accept the terms next. Uh, then it's going to detect all your devices. Now, right now, I have my currently recording device, uh, my G430 headset installed, so I'm not going to uh, continue. Uh, uh, I'm not going to continue showing this installation, as uh, as it's very quite simple. You follow the prompts, you hit install, um, and you're good to go uh, after that. Once it's done in installing. Basically, you'll have something that looks like this. Um, now, first you want to, you may want to start going into your game, and you want to just kind of just wing it. Um, they do have, uh, so first of all, um, you see here, there's different places you can click that'll give you different options. So if you click right here on the buttons, say like that, um, it'll show you, you can have different mapping of uh, a profile. Up here is where you have your profiles. Now they'll have they'll have a default profile already for you. Now you can uh, either edit that or you can actually um, right click and choose um, to make your own profile. So here we'll just go with uh, Terraria, just because that was the one I deleted. Uh, and then you want to click the plus sign here, and then you want to uh, choose application. Now this is if you want to specifically choose. An exe. If you want the, if you want this to um, specifically find uh, a game that you already own, um, you can go into this, I believe. Yes, and it'll show you all a list of games and everything. Um, so basically, you can choose whatever games you want uh, from here uh, if you have them on your computer or whatnot, and it'll it'll create a profile for you. Um, if you want to just kind of take an easier route. So say Terraria, boom, is there. Hit OK. And there, it gives me just very generic buttons. But the nice thing about that is you can edit off of this. So if you feel like this isn't good enough, you can start editing it. So I'm going to actually just completely delete this profile so we can start right fresh. I don't know where these are coming from.
I guess it just auto. So be careful when you click OK because make sure you only select the ones you need because clearly. Okay, so now that we're back to normal, sorry about that. Uh, so let's uh, let's do like uh, like I started. Terraria. Uh, and then you click the plus sign here. Choose application. Um, we'll go computer. Now you go wherever your game file is saved. Um, this is actually a bad example because I'm pretty sure I don't even have Terraria on this computer anymore. So let's do something I do have on my computer. Um, and I'll do another Diablo profile. And then so I select the launcher that I want. I hit open. All right, so now you have the Diablo three exe here so you hit okay bam so now you have a diablo three has a nice little icon so pretty um and here is where you can start mapping out your keys um so basically for myself personally this is going to be variant on person to person and how your gameplay goes but i generally like to have um kind of like i tend to go with the like the first key so you're on the keyboard say um and since you're not going to be you got this basically because you don't want to use WAS. Um, I kind of just replace uh, the WAS keys and kind of put them here um, a little bit differently though. So like, um, I feel like this is going to be the main key for myself personally. So I'm going to select the E and there it shows you the E key. It's named E. You can change the name if you want. You can be like main attack or whatever. So hit OK and bam. So anytime you hit that key, on your gamepad it's going to do it's going to tell the computer an E so whatever your game is mapped to E for that'll do that and basically that's just how it goes in here so very simple uh, since Diablo doesn't have a lot of buttons which is nice it's quite an easy setup so here I got escape QRE these are my three main things that I click G over here um, you know teleport here some this these buttons you know I don't click a lot so I put um, like my quest log, my character pop-ups with like the skills, all that kind of stuff. This is uh, apparently my shift modifier. I don't know why I have that on here. Um, and then like maps and bags. And because I don't have WAS for Diablo as a clicking game, um, I don't have this bound to anything. So very simple, um, very generic kind of setup. Um, for something like WoW that I have here that has a lot of buttons, uh, and I use all of them, um, you see I have WASD set up here. You can map this button here. Uh, you press down and it can be used as a button as well. Uh, I find it a little bit difficult to just press while I'm moving around, so I find that I, it's not very much use to me. Um, if you find that it is, go for it and map it to whatever you wish. Um, and now if you find a key that you're not totally stoked with or you want to change what it, what it does, you can right-click and it'll give you all these different uh, options here for me so you can unassign the key you can edit uh, edit command so basically it's this you can just change what uh, what it is um, and as you'll see there's some settings on this side we're not going to go over those today uh, possibly in another video but there is other even more options than just generic keystrokes and uh, from a keyboard so uh, you can always keep that in mind if you feel free to uh, browse around if you think you can uh, figure it out on your own that's totally cool you do what you need to do um, so basically that's it for the key binding part of, um, of this segment so um, what I really like about this is kind of just like of course it has it but um, it's the color system now what I really like about it is that not only can you do uh, per profile backlight settings we can also do per uh, mapping uh, section so you can map one map two map three um, and you can change the colors of all of them and they'll stay uh, really good um, I don't know I really like it uh, it can gives you a little bit more uh, customization and uniqueness to your game style so if you find that Diablo is because it is so red you want it to be specifically red boom you you can change it to red whatever you 
you so desire. Um, one thing though, make sure that if you care to save your profile, there is a save option. Um, I'm not in here, sorry, you have, you'll have to go back to uh, here where you did all your key mapping. And you just right click and you can save. You can also do a bunch of other stuff like export the file so then you can sa uh, excuse me, have it on your computer for a later time. Uh, test profile, set as default, set as persistent, all these kind of options that are available to you. So don't don't be afraid to uh, use them if you so desire. Um, so let's go back to the coloring system. Again, very simple, generic. Um, you can customize it any way you want. Um, do pay attention to how it looks on your actual gamepad because, of course, it's not going to match the colors precisely as you may want them. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your uh, your little customization. Um, so we're going to head back here. So now you can see that you can also click up here. Here's a neat little option. You have a little uh, detail. Um, once you open up games, um, World of Warcraft, for example, and PTR, the uh, public test realm, they will show you stats from that game. Um, there are limited, but there they're limited, but there are other applets you can get. Uh, for example, I have the OBS Open Broadcasting System uh, applet, which shows all what's what I'm currently streaming at, uh, bit rate, dropped frames, any of that kind of stuff. So it's a little neat thing if you if you enjoy streaming. It's a cool thing to have. Um, all that kind of stuff. So you got a lot of uh, little options here. Um, of course, this button here changes it. Um, you can get uh, you can have a generic clock. You can have um, some just even some news popping up. Like you have uh, quite a few options. It's a little bit you know kind of uh, uh, not tacky, but it's kind of like just like for me personally, I don't believe it to be necessary. But it's a really cool little thing to have. Um, definitely, definitely glad it's there versus it not being there. I suppose. Um, and here's the last cool thing, um, which I really enjoyed. I didn't even realize this was a thing for a while. Was that you can actually take your profiles that you have saved onto your computer, and you can save them onto the gamepad itself. Now, what this means is, is you can actually take the gamepad to a LAN or to anywhere, or plug it into any different computer, and you'll have access to your profiles that you made on your uh, original computer, the original profiles you made, which I find really cool. So all you need to do is you just take a profile, boop, you drag it right into this box, and it'll start, uh, it'll sync it up, and boom, it's there. Show you a little bit of what, uh, how much memory is used. Um, so uh, it's not a huge deal, but it is something to uh, be weary of. Um, and if you don't want that profile there anymore, you just drag it over here to that trash can. Yes, done. Basically, that's basically it. All you need to really know for basic setup of your G13 gamepad is right here. Um, I apologize for the little bumps on the road there. Um, first video of doing something like this. So if you did like it, if you uh, have any comments, have any, uh, any advice at all, uh, please feel free to comment. If you really enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Um, and feel free to express your words. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from any and all of you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.